Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining today's Inspire podcast. I'm so excited to be with you here again on this opportunity just to get together. I just heard, so we've got this incredible step challenge going on, and I just heard that we have a new leader in the clubhouse, Anna Still, Kendall, how do you pronounce the last name? Still be? Well, she's entered on the leaderboard as Anna Still be. Anna. Yeah, I mm-hmm. miss both of the names, so Jim Sweeney will give me a hard time later, I'm sure, for that, but <laughs> Anna Still be. 184,000 steps. Man, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Right. Here, I'm sitting here with Sean Mike. Even Sean's impressed. And you don't get Sean impressed with anything. So I'm sitting here. This is the first time. Kendall, I think you and I did this one time where we did the Inspire podcast from an airport. And you and I kind of sat here and did it together. Today, I've mm-hmm. got Sean in the room, which I don't know if I've ever done one of these like with somebody saying so cost with death, especially somebody as intimidating I'm, as you I'm, are. I'm not. No, I'm intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Sean, we have this deal where we ask guests to sing, and since you're here, but you are. Dude, I ain't singing nothing. <laughs> but I love you. You tell me to do it, I'll do it. But I don't want to sing nothing. I cannot. Like, I stay in my lane. <laughs> me too, bro. Me too. Me too. Well, hey, we have a big announcement today. I want to say how excited we are to welcome an amazing new partner. And I'm excited to announce it's another one of Family First Life's incredible partners that you guys, it's amazing what you guys have been built in at FFL, Sean. And, you know, I tell you this all the time. You had about 40 people or so in the office yesterday. And these are young, dynamic leaders. You know, what people don't realize is you're bringing in kind of the new breed of, of insurance agents, people who are really educated, really sharp, really attractive, you know, just like the people who you don't sometimes associate with insurance people. They, they usually look more like me. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, no, that it is, you're bringing in these incredibly young people and average age, 29 years old, right? Probably younger now. Weird. Well, just, just got well younger. we met the guy last night. He 22. 22 years old. 22. Every it's month. A, it's amazing. Building a team. Humble, mm-hmm. sharp, yeah. building a great team. Yeah. What do you think is the secret to success that you guys have? You know, Brian, I think one of the things that we looked at, you know, we talk about this a lot. It's all numbers give us a lot of perspective. You know, if we got two and a half or so million licensed agents in the country and hundreds of millions of people, like you talked about how many clients Integrity served last year. But then when you look at how many hundreds of millions of people you are, you're like, it's pretty Right. It's cool. It's impactful. Yeah. We have so we lot, far to go. Lot, lot lot to go. I think, Brian, it's, you know, you talk about that. When I got my insurance license, I thought it was something it wasn't. And I think we've done a really good job educating people on what it actually is. A, it's actually genuinely really fun and cool to do. Yes, the benefit, the byproduct money is pretty amazing. But I think a lot of folks don't realize how much need our clients have. And most people we, we recruit once they go out and help somebody, I'm like, dude, the most, my ask people is like, what's the most surprising thing? And they're like, how much the person needed my help? And I think a lot of people want to be in sales, except they don't want a cold call. They don't want a cold knock. They don't want to, and I, I wouldn't want to do it either. I tell people all the time, if you came to my house and knocked on my door unannounced, <laughs> you'd be thanking God if you made it out of there. Because I don't fill anything out. You know what I mean? But you take the percentage of populations like, man, please come help me. And I think that's what's surprising because that's what kept a lot of people out of sales. They're not, most people are not excited to go, I can't wait to get in and go call people that don't want my help. Nobody wants to do that. They just don't. And we have so, with what, what, what's happened with integrity, you're talking about how many leads were put out, the opportunity we have and how many families we have that have raised their hand that we can't get to. I think we're just excited about it, man. I think we're empowering people mm-hmm to know it's okay. Like it's okay to go achieve. Cause that 22 year old, you know, you start unpeeling the onion here with people, you start talking. A lot of the people we work with are like, man, I've, nobody's ever talked to me about these products. I didn't even know a lot about it. And not many people in my family have achieved at a certain financial level. 
And I think we're trying to go like, dude, that's okay. Yeah. Like somebody's got to break that cycle. That was for me. I wanted to break that cycle in my family. You know, we were talking about this yesterday. There's a lot. I mean, we could go for hours talking about this. And I, I think everybody on the call would love to hear more from you, frankly. But you're talking about like door knocking and things of that nature. Through our Integrity Lead Center, we had 250,000 yeah. leads last week. Last week, I mean, there were 250,000 people that raised their hand mm-hmm. that said, I need help with insurance. I just feel like we're just scratching the surface. Right. The amount of people that we're able to help, you know, change their lives in a lot of ways, not only the clients, but also the agents, the agencies, is truly inspiring. I feel like we're just getting started. The other thing I love about, um, I, I think people don't realize how simple it is in a lot of ways. I mean, your message is just get to work, right? Just get out and get to work in a lot of ways, right? Well, I, you know, I think what bothered me when I got in the industry is all these people want to do all this extra training that actually didn't need to be done. The reality is we need to serve the client, know the product, be compliant, yeah. do right by them. But those things aren't hours and hours and hours every day of training. And I think a lot of people spent, you know, it's funny, like I walked to and from football practice in my soccer cleats because soccer cleats were cheap. My mom couldn't pick us up. My mom didn't have a car most of the time. And my brother and I, she was working. That doesn't mean I want my kids walking on the highway to practice. And I think a lot of the people that I've seen when I got into the industry, I'm like, it's not 1984 anymore, bud. I'm not mad that you knocked on doors. Good for you. Congratulations. <laughs> but why would we want, not want to help people not have to do that? Right. Like with what integrity has done technologically, mm-hmm. we're so far ahead of the curve because of what you guys have brought to us. Now, listen, two and a half years when we partnered with, with integrity prior to that, so we were just trying to figure out how to get moving. So what's in front of us now, what we all have, and I think that's part of it. People, it's all about knowing the people. The products are, again, they're, and we, we have them that way. We're not in, we're not in some kind of dynamic market where I'm sitting around talking about rates and your money. A client asked me one day, he goes, man, that's real hard to sell. Like, what do you mean? He goes, it's called whole life. It's good for my whole life. That yeah. must be really simple. I was like, that's right. I like simple things that make sense for people and are, and are going to change their lives. You know, the other thing that I love about your group, you know, there's a lot of interesting things that happen in the industry and a lot of different things. For your group, so you had 40 people in last night. We Monthly, we're bringing at least about 40. Yeah, about, about every month. Every month. We, we, we meet with about 40, talk yeah. to them about the opportunity. Never any alcohol. Mm-hmm. Nobody understands. And most people would never. So you got, you got like 20, 25 year olds. They're like these. These people that typically, you know, the typical insurance meeting is then you go to the bar, you yeah. hang out. Yeah. Your group is like, hey, this is work. Like, this is all about work, and let's, let's try to help people. It can be hard enough. And what I tell people all the time is, I'm not preaching to you. You do what you want to do with your life. I'm just telling you that as you're in this place where you're trying to achieve, the more distractions you have in your life, the worse. I mean, dude, it's hard enough. Yeah. So it's harder to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. If you were drinking the night before. And I might be able to like, you can do whatever you want at your meeting. But if you come down, you know, we had a, one of the first like six months from business. Guy came in, he ordered a drink at the meeting. I said, hey, man, you got a minute? He said, yeah. I said, we're at a work deal, right? And I'm, I'm paying the bill. He said, yeah. I said, okay. I said, you can do whatever you want in your time. I love you. And I mean that. But I want to talk to you about work. I'm not looking to make more friends. I have friends. You have friends. And I think people respect that because we're just... But I just want to get down and help them. You all, when, when they leave, go live your life, do what you want to do. But they get to meet you. And on top of it, you know, I said this the other day. Somebody said to me, we have at least one or two people that will say, who will be at the meeting? And I'll go, well, Brian Adams will be there for a little bit. And they'll say to me, the CEO of Integrity will be there. And they'll go, I work at my company, which has 25 employees, and I can't meet the guy or girl in charge. Mm-hmm. So the access that we have, we do that. We do monthly road to Integrity meetings that we have in our, our corporate office in Boca. We get 200 people a month in there yeah. and you do a you know video for us, introduce, you know, the, what we got going on here. But, you know, Brian, I think we have a lot of people that's just, and it's true, who can see some kind of light at the end of the tunnel and can own their business. And I still go back to when you and I met and I didn't know you. So when you said other people that worked with us could partner, I don't want to say I thought you were lying, but it was really hard for me to get my, my arms around it. And it's been life changing. Do I mean this today? Like this is, I sat there last night and I, I, you know, I thought about this announcement. I cried, man. Like I, I don't know. I just think about where people were and where they are now and life changing too. Well, so it is what, what I love is, is your emotion, your passion. And what you're doing is you're saying, look, everybody, I want you all to be able to experience this. 
and you've been telling the integrity story and thinking about like that there is more to continue to build this business. And so today we have a huge announcement. I'm so excited. This this guy, when I first met him, I mean, he just brings joy, right? 100%. It just, 100%. just joy. Like yeah. you just want to be around this guy. And so I'm excited to announce that Honeycut Insurance Marketing is now partners with Integrity. We just signed this 30 minutes ago. We just wrapped this up, which is, I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. Like we move fast. Yeah. So, but Trey Honeycut, the president and CEO of Honeycut Insurance Marketing, has be- become a a great partner with FFL is now an integrity-based business and part of the integrity family. Trey and his team are based out of Victorville, California. They focus on helping people with their life insurance needs, just like what you just talked about, real people out there. And joining integrity now will give him more resources, more support. And he's one of those guys, Sean, that I remember when we started talking about, you know, can we bring on other partners? Now we've brought on over 20 uh, just in FFL alone, and I'm so excited to now welcome Trey as our newest partner. Trey, congratulations, buddy. We're super proud to be your partner. And I got to say, Sean is literally tearing up. (laughs) (laughs) Tearing up about how excited he is that you're now a partner, man. Well, thank you, Brian. And thank you, Sean. I'm tearing up too, man. I'm excited to be part of the platform. I'm excited for what this is going to do for our team in the future. And I'm just excited to really get back to work and help as many people get here as possible. I appreciate you guys. And, you know, I'm really excited. What, what's powerful about the platform is it's really an all-star team. And I haven't really been doing insurance very long. So just to be able to, to glean and learn from some of the greats in the industry, it's going to be a wild ride. I'm excited. Well, man, we're super excited. And I, look, I know you've built an incredible business. And, you know, I think that the framework that, you know, integrity sets up, but FFL in particular set up really allows you to build these incredible businesses. And I understand you've had some really challenging times in your life, which makes this business even more meaningful for you personally. Tell us a little bit more about that, man. Well, what it was, I literally got involved in life insurance. As a, my father had, uh, had died in 2006. He died of cancer. And he was healthy. He was fit. The strongest human I've ever met for his body weight. And one day he bent down to pick something up off the ground. He couldn't get back up. And he was only 51. So he goes to the hospital and they thought he had pneumonia. And after they did a bunch of tests, my mom showed up that night and said, hey, you know, I got bad news. And he had two tumors on his lungs, 13 on his brain, one on his brain stem, one on his liver, and one on his kidney. And the biggest one on his, on his brain was the size of an orange and he never had even complained of a headache and six weeks later I mean he passed away and that was so unexpected it isn't like he he went away one day and passed away but six weeks was I mean he didn't give us any time to grieve or prepare and what I what I learned in that experience was when somebody's sick that's not the time you want to talk about death like you want to talk about death when people are healthy because when people are sick they want to talk about living And what I found out when I got involved with the, I should have got grief counseling, but a few years later, I found this opportunity to go help people with life insurance. And for me, it was just a chance really to tell my dad's story. And and that's how it started out. And I needed to talk about it. I couldn't talk about it with my mom. I needed to talk about it with somebody. So I would go sit down with people. And when I sit down with these families, what happened initially was I needed to make money real bad. (laughs) So... Initially, I was thinking, I, I got to make the sale. And then I, I slowed down and I thought about it. And I go, man, I'm, I'm sitting with, with my dad. You know, like, this is, this is where I'm at. This is my opportunity to make right what could have been made right back then. And then when he passed away, what happened was my mom, he basically had to sell everything in a fire sale, made a bunch of bad financial decisions. Because when someone passes away, your family is met with this emotional devastation. And then this financial stress all coupled together. He did not have life insurance. I think back to the one time I was like 12 years old and he could have got it. And it was a friend from high school and he sits across the table from him and my parents beforehand, they agreed they weren't going to buy it because it was a friend from high school. And at the end, my dad goes, well, we're just going to think it over, you know, and he, he looks across the table and he goes, yeah, yeah, give me a call. You know, you, you can think about it. If I could change one thing, if I could go back, I'd, I'd go back to that and be like, you, you weak, feckless agent, like, <laughs> Stand up for my family. Say, say you care enough. Do something. I mean, it was cost of a cup of coffee a day. 
And then I don't know if tomorrow, ever, I don't know if they ever even talked about it again, but he just, you know, he didn't want to be uncomfortable challenging my family. So, so when Sean Mike started teaching us to stand up for people and challenge people, it really, it made a lot of sense to me. And after I got started a couple of years later, my mom ended up getting lung cancer and she passed away. And I was in a real bad place. And the thing that caused me to fall in, you know, the value of partnership, it means a lot to me because that's what I had with Sean and Andrew and, and Paul, because when my mom passed away, you know, Andrew treated me the same, whether I was producing a lot or a little, he was always the same. And when my mom passed away, he literally gave me a job in his office to come, to come do recruiting. And he didn't have to do that. He was doing fine. And I don't know if he knew how much value I would add or not. I think he was literally just trying to do the right thing and help me out. What he thought was the right thing, you know, trying to just extend a hand and get me out of my house from staring at the wall and crying all the time because I'm an only child and, and all that. So, so yeah, so that's where it started. I, I started in 2016. I sold for a couple of years. And in 2016, I started in Andrew Taylor's office as a recruiter. We did that for a while. And then he took me to lunch one day and said, hey, you got to go out and do this on your own. <laughs> so wow. that's pretty much the whole story. <laughs> You know, you know, I love that story. I, you know, I, I grew up, my parents owned funeral homes. And one of the reasons I do what I do now is because I saw firsthand the fact that people, real people like your family, coming in, having no plans in place, the emotional toll that, that losing a loved one takes, but also the financial toll on, on you as well. And I, it, what, like what we do really matters. And I think, I mean, Sean, you, you talk about this a lot about like standing up for people, mm-hmm. like truly saying, I mean, it, it's hard to overcome objections. Let's not kid ourselves. But what we do truly has an impact. And I, you know, I was I told this story. One of my best friends since I was four, he's like a brother of mine. He died in 2016. And, you know, his family was devastated. Two little kids. I mean, just a devastating event. But he had bought a life insurance product with one of our carriers from one of our agents that ended up paying them out. And he had bought a term life policy when he got married for $500,000 of term life for like, you know, $20 a month or something. And I remember talking to him about it, saying, I'll never need this. Like, this is, this is kind of crazy. I'm getting this. But if you, because, you know, I'm, I'm in the business. I'm like, dude, you now you got something to ensure. You're like your wife's here, all that type of stuff. And the only regret I had is it, it wasn't more, right? But but giving that five hundred thousand dollars to his wife, she still is in their house. Their kids are you know, look they they're grieving the loss still. Of, uh, we're all are even you know seven years later, or six years later, but you know, financially it helped in a big way and really having confidence, right? And you know, I think there's a lot of about what, what Trey just said about, you know, standing up for families and saying like, if something happens to you, like this, this is going to help you in a big way. I mean, you guys, Sean, I, I know you train on this a lot, especially when somebody sends in a lead and says, hey, I'm raising my hand, I want to know about it, of having like that confidence to say, I'm here to really help you, right? Well, it's mindset, right? And I think for me, once I got my hands on the lead system, I thought to myself, A, why would I ever go there and not get you what you asked for? B, if I let you know how much I care about you, it's going to be hard for you to come up because the objections really are just, they're nonsensical. I mean, they don't make sense. I want to think about it. That makes like no sense. You know what I mean? It's not a good time to buy it. Well, of course it's not. No, no time's a good time for a new bill, right? None of that makes sense. I'm going to call my uncle who works down at the restaurant. Like none of that makes any sense. And I, t- I think what we try to teach is the appropriate mindset because when you have that, most people respond very well to secure people that are leading them somewhere. But if you're uncomfortable around me and I already asked you for something, that makes me nervous. And what I'll probably think is you're going to lie to me. I mean, our clients, the only really concern I think they have is not the new bill. They have they know they got a new bill. They don't want to be lied to. You know, mm-hmm. and I think when you look at, you know, Trey's such a great testament because Trey's somebody, Brian, who was never like a top producer. And you don't have to be, you know, Trey was like, I'm humble enough to say, Paul's good. Mark's good. This guy's good. This girl's good. Listen to what they're saying. I'm here for you, but I'm not going to try to be all things to all people. And I think a lot of people try to build a business 
and they want to be the show, the whole deal. Me, I don't. I want to have my family taken care of, and I want other people to win. If other people, I was at one of my favorite moments we've had in eight years, Trey did a grand opening. Trey, if you, two things, Brian, if we have a FFL strongest man competition, nobody should enter because Trey's going to win. Really? Trey's a monster. <laughs> He ain't going to run a marathon, but he is a monster. Put a fridge on his back, walk 40 yards, tow a truck with his teeth. He's, and if we have a junior Olympics, which is an academic Olympics, Trey's kids are going to win. Like, my son's smart, but Trey's kids are going – don't enter your children. You're going to feel bad about yourself. Yeah, they're going to win. And we're at Trey's office, Trey's office in Victorville. His younger boy is waiting. He's by his time. He's eyeing me up. And I know he's smarter than me. And he's, and he's eyeing me up. And I'm asking everybody asking questions. And he's like, no, 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 no. And finally, he looks at me and he says, I have a question. With like good attitude about it. I was like, I always thought it'd be good. I hope it's not something like about trigonometry. He's going to embarrass me, but I'm not going to be embarrassed. And he says, what's it feel like to be the boss? And I said, let me ask. I answer a lot of questions with a question I said. Why would you ask me that? And he said, because you're the boss. I go, how in the world am I at your dad's office with your dad's staff? with the agents that work with your dad. I didn't sign this lease. I'm not involved at all. I just work here. Your dad's the boss here. I'm working for your dad. Why don't you ask your dad what it's like to be the boss? Why are you asking me? And he was just like, like you're so smart, huh? But it was, but that made me feel real good because that's actually the truth. Trey runs his business. And watching all that and the progression, I think the other thing I want to say is Trey and Andrew have been through a lot of the same things. You know what my favorite parts of the last eight years has been, Trey? What? Mediating you and Andrew. <laughs> but here's the thing, Brian. Andrew and Trey, you know what they both know? How much they care about each other. Yeah. And that's how people win. Your clients, if they know how much you care. People are like, you know, can you help me with the objections? I'm like, I'd like to just teach you to avoid them because I didn't get many. I'm sorry. And I, I can say it if it makes you feel better. But, like, if I meet with 10 people, probably eight or nine of them are going to say yes because they ask for insurance. And if it's two or three, I'll help you think better. But it's definitely your fault. It's not the client. And I think that's the thing we started switching the gears. What's easy to say, look what they do. No, it's not they, bro. It's you. <clears throat> I used to draw a stick figure on the board and go, here's you. Here's the stick figure. Two family members. They got a lead. They filled it out. They mailed it back. Or now they do it on the internet. And they want life insurance. And then you go out there and they say, no. Who's the variable? You are. They wanted it before they met you. So there's something. They wanted it with the form. They wanted it online. And then they were introduced to you. And they said, no. So that part of it, like, change you. I'm always like, how can I get that? That much? If you and I do something, Brian, and my job's doing it, I should, that's not me. That's me. If I come here to sell you something and you don't buy it, you say you wanted it, that's 100% my fault. It's not you. It's not because your wife. It's not because I screwed up. And I think Trey and Andrew are such a, a complete, an unbelievable example of we care. And Trey, he did hire you because you're going through a tough time. He did give you that job to help you. And I love you, Trey, but you weren't number one recruiter option. He just wanted to help you. And you knew he wanted to help you subconsciously. And then when you built your business, you wanted to help him as well as yourself because you all love each other, which is why you're so passionate with each other, you know? And that's what people understand. And all the other stuff is window dressing, man. That's what builds businesses. I partnered, Brian, with integrity because I believed you gave a damn about my family. That's the truth. I believe that you were telling the truth. I believe you cared about my family. And I believe you cared about what was happening. I believe we were going to do the right thing. And you're going to let us have freedom and continue to protect clients. I didn't do it for all the other stuff. Hell, the, the PowerPoint was a long time. I didn't even know what happened, what was going on. I was just, I'm just like trying to get through it. It's not mad at you. I'm like, what do we get to? How does this work? And where do we go? And I did it because your heart. And, and Trey, you, the people in your business that are with you are following your heart. And you've learned to control that and control your emotions, right, Trey? It's a work in progress for all of us. But you come a long way, dude. And when we did the entire part, one of the first names that came to my mind was, we got to get Trey's, Trey's got apart. And Andrew's been pushing me like crazy, Trey. So just so you know, annoying the heck out of me about it. Well, speaking of Andrew, we have Andrew on the phone. So we should have Andrew join this party here. Andrew, I know this is a huge, huge announcement for you personally, just because all of you guys have been through. I know you've got to be super excited as well. Yeah, man. Trey, congratulations, man. This is a crazy... If I look back on us going to lunch a couple of years ago and talking about Trey working in the office and then thinking a mm -hmm. few years later, he'd be signing a deal with integrity. I'd be like, there's no way that's, that's the craziest thing ever, but it just shows the, you know, doing the right thing and helping people and Trey's hard work. What can be possible in a few years? 
And one thing about Trey is he he's helped everybody and our business would not be the same without him. And he's, he's a big team player and he was always helping people when he wasn't getting something out of it. And he put stuff together for us that, I mean, without it, we wouldn't be here, any of us, as far as the people that work with them. So he's always had that mindset of one big team. And it's cool to see that at the end of the day where he's been able to get himself. And Trey, I'm, I'm super proud of you, man. I'm excited for your family and your boys. And this is a big day. And I think that this is a huge win for integrity and a huge win for you, Trey. Since I did my deal with integrity is one of the best things I've ever done. And you're going to love it. You're going to love the team. And, and welcome to the team, man. Thanks, Andrew. I love you. I appreciate you. Well, dude, thanks so much, Andrew. I, Andrew, congratulations on your new baby as well, buddy. Thank you. How's Atlas <laughs> playing the new, <laughs> the new one? He's actually doing really well, but we're definitely adjusting to having two kids and, and a newborn that's nocturnal. Yeah, that's, uh, that's <laughs> a tough transition for sure. <laughs> as, they have another one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, one of, one of my favorite gifts I've ever gotten is set in my office. It's something Andrew gave me. It's, I, I talk about we're, we're not playing checkers anymore, we're playing chess. And he gave me this 3D printed chess board that's sitting right there in my office that is one of my favorite gifts of really just kind of always thinking multiple steps ahead. And I, I think that this is a great example, Andrew, of, of you and Sean and the rest of the team thinking multiple steps ahead of how can we serve more people? How do we get more people into the partnership? And, and Trey, you're like a renaissance man. I got, I got to say this real quick. You've got some of the funniest content on social media, bro. Like you're like the <laughs> funny, one of the funniest guys. We'll have to share some of that. You're a Marine. I almost said were. My dad is a Marine, and I said were to him one time, and he, he, about, he about slapped me because he was like, once a Marine, always a Marine. And then you were also a skater. Like, like who would have ever – and now you're the world's strongest man. <laughs> like, how did you – you're like a skater, Marine, an entrepreneur, it's the actor. Like, what can you not do, man? That's amazing. How'd you get into well, skating? We got to we gotta tie that in real quick. Well, there's a lot I can't do. But, you not know um, that? I did not know <laughs> skater. No, I thought well, I, I knew it. a lot. God, I don't even know how well, to like do a rope speed skater. I respond to yeah, that. Yeah, that's good. I can't <laughs> see that. Go ahead, Trey. I got to know. Well, you've only known me 100 pounds overweight. I mean, you, you have to work hard to get this way. <laughs> you know, like I, I worked my way up to this. <laughs> But yeah, I grew up inline speed skating. That's where I started, you know, in, in a roller rink doing races. And I started on regular roller skates. And then I transitioned to inline skating in the 90s when everybody else did. And a bunch of inline skaters around my contemporary, they transitioned to ice. So if you look at ice speed skating over the last 30 years, even this last Olympics, you know, Joey Mantilla, he was in there. That was an inline, he's 40 years old. I'm 44. That's somebody I knew when I raced. And he's, you know, the oldest winter Olympian on ice. So I, I did some ice speed skating too. But the way it started was, you know, I, I saved up my lunch money to buy a pair of roller skates because there was a girl that I liked and she would always go to the skating rink and I couldn't skate at all. And I was like, well, you know what I need? It's, it's not to learn how to skate. I need really expensive skates. Because if I had expensive skates, I could obviously be a good skater because that's what it's about. So I saved my lunch money for like a year and I... And I got these expensive skates and I went to the rink and I fell in front of this girl that, that I liked. And then she ran over my finger and broke it. And then she laughed at me. And so I was like, holy cow, now I got to actually learn how to skate because I got to show this chick. <laughs> so so that's, that's how I started skating. And then once I started competing, and I, I go back to that a lot in my mind as to what I learned from speed skating that, that made me good at this because speed skating is the ultimate individual team sport and even though you want to win races and do your best as an individual and i'll compete if you're on my team i'm going to cheer you on and cheer for you as much as i would for me so so i'm going to try to beat you but if you beat me i'm not going to sulk and sit in the corner and cry i'm going to cheer you on because you earned that so the team i was on there was this guy joey and he was one of the best in the world actually and joey and ian and i was the third best skater on the team and my job on that team 
my coach pulled me aside one day and we used to skate six days a week, two hour practices, 150 miles a week for years. That's what I did. He pulls me aside one day and he goes, you know what your best gift is? I go, what? He goes, you make people better. Because your job is to make Joey better. And that's the way I looked at it. So when Joey got on the floor and he would race and he'd be exhausted, they'd let me rest and I would go sprint in front of him until I was coughing up, until I was sick. You know what I mean? Like until I couldn't go anymore and he would have to keep up. And that was my role on the team. And I equated that to what I was doing in Family First Life because I, I wasn't the best producer, but I knew that if I could put myself in a position to help everybody else, to put everybody else first, to play my role. If somebody came to me and complained, I would veer the conversation in a different direction. I would keep a good attitude. I'd say great things about people when they weren't around. And I'd sell people on how great the team was. And that was my role for a long time. And then, you know, when Andrew took me to Chicken Bowl Place and told me I had to go do this on my own, my role had to change. <laughs> I, I changed quickly and, you know, it didn't completely change, but I had to make adjustments. And I got a lot of that from speed skating, for sure. And then the Marine Corps. So then I went to the Marines after that. And the thing I loved about the Marines was the camaraderie and the team atmosphere and the mission of it all. Like the fact that we would all, you know, sacrifice and run headlong toward a common goal and not worry about our own personal welfare. Like there was, there was a purpose behind what we were doing. And this is the only place, Family First Life is the only place I've ever found that. Because when I met Sean and Andrew, they were in the midst of like, they have a lot of stuff going on and they never complained about nothing. You know, they, they did put families first. I believed in that. They were putting the families of the, the clients first, first and foremost. And then the families of the agents, that was really what was going on. And I just bought into it because I never saw them change. Like they lived by it and they died by it. And I, I got sold out on that. That's awesome. Well, you make us better, man. And I think that's one of the, the ideas of integrity is you, you can still have that inner competitive nature, but we're all stronger as a team. And that's just proven itself in so many different ways. And we're super excited to be announcing this tomorrow. Please make sure everybody watches, likes, shares, and social media and, and everywhere else. But uh, Trey, you make us better, buddy, and we're proud to be your partner and excited to go on this journey with you, man. Thanks for trusting us here, buddy. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on. Love you, Trey. I love you guys, too. All right. Well, hey, thanks everybody for joining today. And this is this is like honestly the my favorite thing, Sean. We get to do. Yeah. We get to like welcome amazing partners. We get to spend thirty minutes talking to our team members about the great things, and, and they get to hear the heart, right? Mm-hmm. About why we do what we do, and it's incredible. Hey, Sean, man, thanks for spending this time with me. I know we got a lot of exciting stuff we're also doing today, but this is what it's all about, helping guys like Trey and his family and looking for the next round of partners. And, of course, Andrew, thank you, buddy, as well. We love you guys. Thanks, Brian. I hope everybody has an incredible holiday weekend and can't wait to talk to you guys on Monday. God bless you guys. Have a great one.